an incredible story of environmental protection and preservation at times may arise from a taboo, from one of those traditions arriving from who knows where, perhaps born on an evening fueled by alcohol, on a fishing platform in the middle of nowhere, where a bottle of a rock is the conclusion to a day of hard work. But let's start in order. The scene of this story is the Bay of Chen De Rawashi in West Papua, Indonesia. In August 2002, the Indonesian government established in this bay the largest of its protected marine areas, 1.5 million hectares of blue in a fantastic setting of virgin forests, small islands, atolls, and coral reefs. Chen de Rawashi is washed by the equatorial currents, rich in plankton and fish that arrive from the Pacific carried by the trade winds. In the 1980s, some Indonesian fishing companies decided to establish some floating fish stations called Bagan. Fishermen live full time on the Bagan. They're usually Pachau from southern Sulawesi. Men of the sea, able to float for months without setting foot on solid land. In the evening, they light lamps fed by a diesel generator and wait for the nets to fill. Then they pull them in by hand. Some of the fish will end up in local markets, and some will be used as bait for tuna fishing. fish are kept alive inside floating net cages. The abundant live bait tracks the attention of something else. Something that follows the ocean currents the plankton, and the schools of anchovies on which it feeds. The giant enters the bay and swims around the nets, perhaps asking itself why that ball of tasty fish is now unreachable. And this was when the miracle happened. Someone, instead of thinking about money, of what they might earn from the sale of the dried fins of these giants, dusted off an ancient tradition, or probably a new one, perhaps born in a night of a rock and full moon. But the presence of the whale sharks around the Bagan is good luck, bringing fortune and guaranteeing an abundant catch. So someone said that the giants bring tunas and trevally with them, guiding them toward the Bagan. Indonesians are superstitious by nature, and so they began to throw some buckets full of anchovies to their giant benefactor, which returned the favor by establishing itself in the bay.
The whale shark is the largest living fish, able to reach lengths of 12 meters. This is a circumtropical species that is found in all the oceans of the world, limited to the equatorial band. As in other species of shark, the eye can be pushed into the bottom of the orbit and rotated to protect it from accidental contact. The hole that is seen in a position behind the eye is a spiracle, a vestigial organ that bears witness to the relationship of this animal with other species. In sharks and bottom-dwelling species, a spiracle is used for breathing when the mouth is in contact with the sand. Bramera follow the shark, attaching to its body with their cephalic suckers. It tolerates these guests, occasionally in exchange for eating the parasites that attach to the giant. Its mouth has 300 lines of teeth, no more than three millimeter long, practically useless. In repose, it forms a fissure more than one meter long, but when it is pushed forward and opened for eating, its real dimensions are seen. It eats plankton, little fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans that it ingests through its open mouth while swimming. The cartilaginous branchial arches form a filter that intercepts the tiny prey and conveys it toward the throat. But when there is food near the surface, the shark can simply open its mouth, catching the prey with powerful suction. Approaching the platform to collect the ritual tribute, the giants take a vertical position, unmoving, engulfing the prey with powerful swallows. based on size regulates the traffic, with the largest having precedence. Whale sharks are capable of very long migrations. In many areas of the globe, they appear on a set date, corresponding to the availability of food. But where do they go between these times? Many points are still unknown. The behavior of the whale sharks of Chendewawashi, which may be geographically stable, suggests that migrations may be interrupted opportunistically if the animals find abundant food. Recently initiated experiments in marking and photo identification may provide useful data to help in reconstructing their transoceanic routes. Underwater tourism takes a powerful stance in this story. For now, distance and the difficulty of access have allowed only a few to enjoy this experience. The hope is that in the future, this marvel 
can be managed more permanently. It would be incredible to be able to have a closer look at this normally very rarely found creature. Whale sharks are not at all disturbed by the presence of divers, so even when the food is gone, they remain around the began, practically inviting contact with divers, as if it were a kind of game. The friendship born in Chenderawashi between the giant and the fisherman. This spontaneous, symbiotic relationship between two beings linked to the sea gives us a wonderful example of how an enjoyable activity can be transformed into an action of protection and conservation. Our species is led to ask questions and to seek answers, to describe the world that surrounds us. This mental attitude is the basis of the development of science. But after so many hours spent in the water with the whale sharks, the thought that circles around the giant forms of the sharks is not to reconstruct their mysterious migratory circuits. What stays in our mind at the magic moment in which the giant conscious of the presence of the divers, swerves with incredible grace, swimming solemnly alongside them, true divinities of the sea, is could the fisherman be right?